Hello and welcome to the family at work and welcome to part three of our story and actually this will probably be the last part three but I don't know if this story will ever end. <laughs> um, today is my son's birthday which means it exactly one year ago today I got the call that the loggers after a bunch of delays were going to start logging the property which means I think two days from now is when I got the call that all the marketable white oak was gone. Um, also, when we got rear-ended, which still, a year later, we're trying to resolve. Um, but, obviously, we're still here. Um, we didn't go bankrupt, although it was kind of scary there for a little bit. Um, it's just the unique situation. We worked really hard, we built a business, and then we thought we were making the right choices, to protect our investment by doing a 1031 exchange, which put all locked up all our money up into another investment, which is his property. And um, so we still didn't really have access to any of that and those assets that we had built up. So uh, trying to sell the timber off there was what um, you know the plan was, and the white oak that's where the money is. And just to give you an idea, so like a red oak. Uh, let's say you have 100 board feet. Uh, a white oak, okay, you're going to get $200. And that 100 board feet, that's probably like, what, a 20-inch tree if you get two 8-foot logs out of that. Um, so 100 board feet, $200, I get $100 of that. Red oak is like 60, 80 cents a board foot. So I would be getting, uh, what, $40? No. I'd be getting half of it for 60 cents, so I'd be getting $30. So my share, $30 versus $100. Well, here's the thing. That red oak, if I sell that 100 board feet as firewood, I could probably make $200 out of that 100 board feet um, selling bundle firewood. So the problem with the firewood is there's more work involved. You got to process it, but then you got to dry it. Either season it for a year, red or excuse me, oak could probably take even more, maybe two seasons, um, or kiln dry it, which is hopefully coming down the pipeline here for us. But right now we don't have access to a kiln, so uh, I wouldn't be able to see any of that money for another year or two. Although it's more valuable to me as firewood. So even to be honest with you, even the white oak is probably more valuable as firewood to us because of what our business model is selling high end quality dried uh, firewood. Um, not for people trying to heat their homes, but in the city for people that want a campfire or that want to use it for smoking and cooking. Uh, so that's kind of our business model. So the trees have value to us. So I talked to the loggers. I said, well, look, there's tons of uh, board footage here just not white oak can we take some of this other hardwood and use it and they're like well for saw logs it's really not worth much um, we can use it you know the small stuff for pulp wood and uh, essentially because it was hard to get a semi in there and when you're doing that low margin wood you got to have high volume which we have high volume but we would need to get a semi in there and take load after load after load and because of where the property was it, it wasn't without investing and in, because uh, you had to go through a couple creeks and stuff to get there without making the investment we weren't going to get a semi in there uh, we were able to get a triaxle um, truck in there and even then that was kind of iffy on some days so it would have taken more investment and it would have taken a lot more time a lot more effort and we still would have been getting very little return, especially when you split it by half. Um, and every tree that goes out, kind of at you know a couple pennies a board foot, uh, I'm losing out on in potential future firewood sales where I could be making a dollar a board foot um, or more. So um, we didn't really know what to do. Um, so what the the logger said is, all right, look, we're going to. Uh, try we, we've seen a couple smaller white oaks so we're gonna go get those um, we're gonna keep looking and maybe we can get a couple trailer loads um, at least that will maybe cover their expense of moving equipment didn't does not address the um, 
large sum I owe them. <laughs> um, so I'm like, okay. Immediately that day, uh, and I talked about this in a previous video, we were looking for one large property, but we ended up with several smaller properties. Um, I say smaller. The smallest one was about 100 acres, the largest being 600 acres. So I immediately put up for sale my two smallest properties um, because we didn't really have any other option. And the, actually, in hindsight, the cool thing about not getting one property, um, I talked about this in my first video, is capital gains. If I had one property and I sold one property, we'd only be able to get that first $90,000 tax-free. But if I sell one property this year, then I get to collect uh, or pay 0% capital gains on that first $90,000. And then if I sell another property next year, I get to collect uh, that first $90,000 on that sale tax-free. Um, so even though that wasn't my original plan and my desire, the way it worked out before we got into this, now I'm reaping the fruit of that, the benefit of that. So I wasn't sure which property to sell. One was about 200 acres, one was 100 acres. Um, I knew we had enough lumber on this one property. Uh, I was going to try to set up some hunting and do hunting leases and stuff like that. And I, every time I tried that, I just, it didn't work out. So. I didn't really have any need for these properties. Um, it was just, you know, uh, to shelter our tax liability. So um, I wasn't sure which one would sell first, so I put them, I listed both for sale, and I had a lot of interest right away. And fortunately, I mean, it's just a blessing that we got these properties at a pretty good value, um, all of them. Uh, we were at the right place at the right time, and it just worked out. So I could have sold them for less than I bought them two years prior and I because it was all money from the business it's not like I would technically lose money um, so if I bought one for two hundred thousand dollars and sold it for a hundred and eighty thousand dollars you could say I lost twenty thousand dollars but that was never really money out of my pocket it was money from the business um, so still yeah I uh, overall I'd lose twenty thousand dollars but anyways I don't even need to talk about that because I didn't sell them for less I, because I had them at a good deal, and it was two years later, I actually listed them for uh, sizably more, you know, 10, 20% more than I paid for them. And I thought that was still a good deal, and I had a lot of people interested in it. Um, and I had a couple of serious offers, and because I didn't use a realtor, um, I was doing it myself. I don't know if that just maybe a more informal process, and some people were kind of leery, but whenever it came time to like, okay, I'm going to collect the deposit and we're going to sign a purchase agreement um, that, my, you know, I had an attorney draft up, there was always an excuse or a reason or something happened. And a lot of people were traveling from out of state too. Um, so they were serious buyers. Um, but it, I wasn't looking to do this huge long process, you know, with banks and realtors and everything. It's just, you know, if they had their financing or we're going to pay cash, then let's get the deal done. So, um, in the process, I had a lot of people ask me um, if I do owner financing, which I wasn't interested in because I needed the cash. Um, so, I found, um, so, <laughs> between the two properties, it was kind of nice because they're only a couple miles from each other. People could, would find one and then I'd tell them about the other and they were interested in that one. Um, and it worked both ways. Some people wanted something smaller, some people wanted something bigger. And both properties had their pluses and minuses. Um, they're both solid woods, no development done to it whatsoever. Um, so it took about two months or so, and I finally got a cash offer on the larger property. It ended up being the neighbor, which is, there's a story there too, because uh, there was a death in the family, and their property, one of their properties, was for auction. And I went to the auction looking to buy it to add on to that property. Um, but because of the dynamic, and I guess, I'm not sure how it works here in Kentucky, they were trying to explain it to me, but when it goes to probate, uh, if the land, like if I leave, I have three kids, if I wanted this land to be divided between the three of them, they have to sell the land. Now you can buy it as a kid, but you have to go through the process and it has to be auctioned off. So the different factions of the family drove this, I don't know, it was like 100 acres or so, to like a million dollars and it wasn't worth that but because of their whatever um dynamic so obviously i didn't submit a bid for that it was way overpriced um but 
the person that lived there next door to it, the one of the um, heirs, I guess, uh, caught wind that my property was for sale, even though I wanted to buy theirs, and they he ended up making a cash offer for mine. Um, and we negotiated a little bit, but it was going to be a quick close. It was going to be done in a week. His bank was the same bank I had, so there didn't need to be an appraisal or anything because I just had all that done two years prior. Um, so I backed off, I think, twenty grand, but I still made twenty grand more than I paid for it two years prior. Um, so for you know, putting some money in a piece of property, not doing anything with it, and still making a twenty thousand dollar profit, I was happy. More so, it was money in the bank. And uh, then I could pay the loggers back. I could get my processor, not the original processor, because I still didn't have um, to be able to go through that. That was $115,000, I think. And I wasn't going to be able to finish paying that. Um, I needed to scale back. So I was able to resolve all that. I was able um, to pay them off and then pay them back. Uh, and replenish our cash reserves that we had depleted. That was really the stressor for us. And then in the process of doing that, I found a young guy, I say young, younger than me, um, that just happened to be uh, scrolling online and found my ad and didn't have any savings, didn't have credit, um, but thought, hey, I'm just gonna reach out to, the, uh, to me and just have a conversation. Um, and at the time, I had a great conversation with him. I uh, thought he was a really good guy. Um, I told him I just wasn't in a position to really do any type of owner financing, um, which is what he was going to need. But when I sold the other property, I called him back and I said, hey, I think we, I might be able to work something out with you. Let's get together. I want to meet you because if I'm going to do like a land contract owner financing, I mean, you're essentially partners, you know, with this person for however how many years so I wanted to find out you know what his job situation was what his income situation was uh, what kind of debt he had and you know if he was serious um, and you know what his intentions were the property were and all of that um, and I did that and right away I just felt a good connection with him and now I had the liberty that I didn't need the cash from that. And it was a smaller property, so I didn't need the cash for it. In fact, I didn't want to sell it that year because I just had, I'm going to have the capital gains hit from the larger property, the 200 acre property. So I said, all right, here's what I can do. Um, and I don't need to get all the details, but essentially, since he didn't have any money for a down payment, I said, look, if we can do one year of a higher payment to kind of take a down payment and break it off and do a year, It'll do two things. One is at the end of the year, you'll have your down payment. So it's 12 months later, you can do it. Two, it'll show me how committed you are. You know, are you real at, willing to go without a lot of, you know, things, sacrifice a lot of luxury things, you know, food, dining out and whatever, and commit to this and for a full year and not miss a payment? Um, because if you are, then I, that shows me you're serious about this property that you're going to, you know, a person of your word and you're going to fulfill your obligation. Um, so he was excited because to be able to walk into a hundred acre piece of property with essentially no money down, um, you know, not everybody will give you that break. And even with my financing, I wasn't trying to be a bank. I'm not trying to make money off of the property. Um, I mean, granted, I'd, I'd like if I was going to invest my money in the bank, I want to at least do as well as that. But I was by doing owner financing, of course, I'm going to get the sell price I want, which is already more than I paid for it. So even if I, you know, got that, I'd be happy. Plus, if I made a few dollars, you know, over a couple of years for interest, so be it. Um, so it was very favorable. And he was more than over the moon. And I was the property was already in the middle of a survey. I had like almost a year into the survey being done, just took forever to get done. And that survey cost me $10,000. So, but the good thing is the, and I've talked about this in other videos, in Kentucky, like property is sold plus or minus. So land is. So it was 80 acres plus or minus. Now the deed said, if you added it up, was about 100 acres, but there's no way to know. And it could have been 60 acres, you just don't know. Um, but I was having that surveyed um, because that was originally my plan was that was going to be the first property I wanted to sell and I wanted to have a survey. So I 
made the deal with him, already had the survey in progress, and finally the survey was done. And I was, and I told him, I said, look, I'm selling you 80 acres. Now it may be 100, that's what the, pro the deed says, um, which is fine, uh, but I'm selling you 80. Um, well, a couple months go by after we do our deal, and it turns out it's like 108, 110 acres. It was, it was even more than 100. So he feels like he won the lottery, got a screaming deal. Um, and one nice thing is there was an acre or so across the street, which we didn't even know about, um, had no idea that was ours. And uh, I approached him when we got the survey done. I'm like, hey, would you let me have that acre back so I could potentially sell that to somebody else and pay for the survey? Um, and before I could even finish my uh, sentence asking him, he was like, oh yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, he was over the moon. And that's when a kind of affirmation I knew that this was going to be a good relationship. And you're actually probably already maybe seen them on some of my videos. I know um, I've been filming for the last year. I just haven't been editing and posting, so I can't remember what all I've done and what video. Um, but I know you're going to see them in a lot of videos going forward because it turns out we've been doing a lot of work uh, on his property, putting a driveway in and clearing some land to get him a home site. Um, and we actually have a cool little something we picked up. Um, that we're gonna put out there. I'm gonna have a video on that um, But for now once he moves out there, I think that with the firewood business and everything I'm gonna move him into it um, He's gonna help me with it and then maybe a couple years from now. It's gonna be his thing and I won't have to um, be out there to do it and I never thought I would find somebody we had tried we had tried to find people to come out here and live on the property and help us get the business going um, and just never had any luck, which has got me thinking my next property, which is almost 300 acres. I'm thinking about selling that and doing a land contract because if I sell it at one, you know, for somebody gives me cash for it, I'm going to have a hit for sure. 15% It's going to be in that 90 to $550,000 range. So I'm going to pay 15% tax. But if I do a land contract and can keep those payments below that, along with the other one, if all those payments together are going to be keeping me in that 0% bracket, then maybe this is the way for us to go. Um, we still have the main property. We'll be doing the firewood. Uh, but now we'll have income coming in to offset the mortgage payments, the debt. And I never thought about doing that before. Um, but now it's, that's kind of where things are shaping up that make sense. Um, a couple other things, I went and got a uh, seasonal job. See, that's the thing, you know, when all of this happened, I was like, all right, I got to go get a job. But, you know, we have $7,000 a month in mortgage. You know, we're pretty much debt free other than our land, which we had to purchase. And to go walk into a job, you know, to cover that, I mean, it's going to have to be a decent job. And I haven't had an employer in uh, almost 20 years. Um, I mean, I could. I, I was a pilot. I could get back into flying. Um, I mean, that was a long time ago. I kept my flight instructor ratings uh, current every two years. And I mean, there's other stuff I could do, um, you know, but we're hoping to avoid all of that. And uh, then if I did full time get a job and do that, then that would pretty much put the business plans on indefinite hold. I wouldn't be out there, be able to be out there. I wouldn't be able to do the firewood and process it. And, and all those things, even doing all that labor now, I won't be able to see the financial fruit of that for another year or two. Um, so, and the other aspect is we had bought equipment and, you know, yeah, I didn't have to take the processor. I didn't have to take, uh, you know, we bought an eight ton excavator um, used, but we could have sold all that off. So, even though things got really scary for a while, it was a balancing act of making, let's try to make good decisions. Um, we didn't want to panic. Um, uh, and we trust, you know, none of this is ours. That's the thing is, you know, the business, our house, our vehicles, everything, none of this is ours. You know, we've been, we've been blessed. We've been given this stuff, um, you know, for temporary seasons. And it could all burn today. Uh, it could all be gone today. And we don't hold on to that. Our family doesn't. And that's kind of why this is called the family work. Because we believe that, you know, the American dream. That if you have an idea, you know, you can meet a need. And if you work hard, you can go achieve, accomplish something. Um, there's going to be uh, struggles along the way. 
you know it's not going to be easy if stuff was easy then everybody would doing it be doing it <laughs> um so you know we're going to chug along we still got you know we want to grow the firewood business and do that um, we hang hung on to the equipment um, we're trying to be wiser with our spending but again with no money coming in that goes pretty fast so we're still moving around a couple pieces to get us into that next phase um, one thing I'll wrap up I don't know if I did uh, the loggers it took six months um, but from when they got there but they did a trailer load here or a truck load here or a truck load there a truck load here and I got film of a lot of this and originally they were only going to take like eight uh, 18 inch and long 16 inch and larger trees because anything below 16 inch would fit on my processor and I'd make more money with those trees selling firewood than I would take them to the mill even white oak but now the plan was as they kept finding these trees, they were like, all right, if we can just find enough, which would really be twice as much, to pay off what I owe them, then they could just walk away. And I wouldn't make anything from it. I mean, technically I would because they already paid me a half year earlier, but I used all that money to pay for the processor and to pay the mortgage bill because they were six months, actually eight months longer getting out to the property. So that was the goal, and by February, that's what we ended up doing. Um, but they had to take a lot smaller trees, which was frustrating, because um, you'll learn I didn't even get paid for any, some of those trees. Um, but there's a lot of trees still left at the property, um, especially treetops, that I'm going to be able to go get this fall, and we're going to be able to process that into firewood, and that will be our first, um, essentially, uh, wood that we'll have hopefully next fall to be able to sell there's still a lot of things that have to happen between now and next year for all that come in place but um, so that's in a nutshell you know how we survived it wasn't like I mean it's not like I don't know a good analogy it is kind of like you had money in a bank and it's gone um, but it's not like we um, had planned our life around that million dollars of firewood when we bought the property we bought the property price per acre uh, for timber property and not necessarily like the value of the timber but just you know here's acreage and here's you know X dollars per an acre what a fair value is um, and it had been on the market for a while so we got a really good price on it. Um, I could, even without that white oak, I bet I could sell it today for what we paid for it. Um, yeah, because I, yeah, especially been, now it's been three years. And, um, and that's even after taking off, uh, you know, $100,000 of, of white oak. Um, but there won't be you know you can't show that cruise i mean you can still show the cruise and because there's still all the other wood there um but i don't know i mean i got a lot of emotions about it it's just it was frustrating because um we weren't looking to get rich we were just using it as a source of income and if you've ever started a business before or owned a business you know sometimes you think you have a contract with somebody and you think that you know, or you have a client. Um, I've been in this situation before. You put all your eggs in one basket and then you lose that client um, and you lose that income. We lived in Arizona and when we were there, we had a lot of friends, Border Patrol, and they were doing 20 hours a week overtime. So they were making, you know, let's just say $100,000 a year, but they were making another 100000 in overtime. And it had been like that for years and years and years. It was just, that's what it is. You just double your salary while when you're looking at overtime and then I can't remember what the political reason was but at some point they said we're doing away with overtime and so many people out there had based their life bought their house their vehicles everything based on that overtime as their income even though it was never like a fully guaranteed thing it wasn't their salary and when they lost that source of income a lot of people lost their homes and lost their cars because they, you know, it had been like that for so long. 
And that's kind of how, you know, I feel like I kind of got into that situation where we had on paper, the trees were there. And when we walked the property, it looked like the trees were there to me. I had the professionals go out there and they didn't catch it um, until it was too late. So and then you find out you're not going to get that income. You try to replace that income and doing the pulp wood wasn't going to make much sense. Firewood for sure is the way to go. It's just, it's not an immediate um, deposit into your bank account. So we sold other properties to help us get through to where the firewood will be up and going. And that's where we're at. You know, lifestyle wise, we've always been frugal, penny pinchers. Um, so nothing's changed there. We might probably scale back a little bit more, if anything. Um, and even going forward, that's our plan. You know, we'd like to, we haven't had a vacation this year. We got one planned, um, a small vacation. Um, and we'd like to maybe have a season where we can travel more. But, you know, it's just as the Lord provides. Like I said, man, we're so blessed. Um, I could look at this and feel like I got robbed and cheated and be mad at whoever did that. They knew they were not on their property. Um, you know, and I talked to law enforcement. I talked to people in the forestry industry because they see it. And there's actually a Kentucky law that dictates how to be compensated if uh, trees are harvested on your property. Um, because we had to notify all of our neighbors when we started harvesting. Um, that way it limits your liability if you do go across the property line. Because again, this place hasn't been surveyed. So unless you're going to pay and get it surveyed, there's really no way of telling. I mean, the deeds go, say, you know, from 100 years ago, go to this tree stump and then, you know, turn north, northwest, you know, and walk 20 paces to this uh, fence post or this rock. And so there is some leeway there. But no, whoever took those trees, they, they came into the property. They knew. They were probably harvesting on that side and just kept going and kept going, you know. I mean, that's like money sitting there, piles of money. Why wouldn't you go get it? Uh, especially if you don't have an ethnic, ethic, excuse me, an ethic system to prevent you um, from taking what's not yours. So it is what it is. I can't change it. I can't do anything about it. I'd just be thankful that we're still here um, and we have our health and look forward to another day that our family can put our hand on the plow and try to make money uh, providing a service or a good for somebody else that's interested in it and um, live the American dream. So thanks for watching. I know I'm a long talker. I apologize. Um, I hope to find better equipment. I'm still doing this on the phone. I hope to find somebody to edit videos for me and I love I have the ideas about content. I just don't like being the guy having to do it, uh, just being honest with you. Um, but I appreciate the feedback that I have gotten, and uh, I'll strive to do a better job at making videos and better quality videos. Um, and I hope you join us for the next one. And take care, and God bless.